since this is a shootout and I mentioned the packaging in the Ames inverter, I should probably also mention it on the OSP Tiger Claw. This box is a little beat up, but it does adequately protect the inverter, no complaints. And this is the information that they give you on the box. Once again, very, very similar. 1500 watts continuous, 3000 watts surge, etc, etc. I'm not going to take time to go over it, but uh, I thought I should at least show you. And I would also compare the user manuals, but I didn't get one with this inverter. I don't know if it comes with one or not. I don't really care, but I can't review it because I do not have it. So we've looked at the nice shiny cases, but haven't actually turned them on. They could just be boat anchors for all we know. So next we're going to see how they actually work, and that's really the most important part, of course. I don't care if it's butt ugly. If it works great, then I want that one. In any case, this is my test setup. I have them both connected up to this same battery bank. These are marine deep cycle batteries, group 24. Two of them, they are fresh, they are fully charged, and they are also connected to this 45 amp battery charger. That will keep them fully charged throughout this test. That way the voltage doesn't sag when I turn one on and then I turn the other one on to compare. That way they're all connected up, everything is fair and everything is always fully charged. For cables, I have this one set of two gauge cables that I got with uh, another inverter. They're a few feet long, about three feet long, going to the Ames inverter, and I made this set of cables. I made a video on how to make cables. Go ahead and check that out. I also have a video on how to select cables. That is a very important video that hasn't gotten many views. I'm kind of disappointed, to be honest because I don't think there's really much information out there, and that's extremely important. In any case, I have these cables that I made. They are also 2-gauge, approximately the same length, going to the same battery bank. I'm just going to leave everything hooked up just like this throughout the entire test. That way, they are equivalent. Same batteries, same charger, same cable gauge, same cable length. Now, one of the things that's really important to people is the no-load current draw. A lot of times you want to have your inverter turned on without any load and you don't want your batteries to go dead. Maybe it's in your truck and you want to be able to start your truck and leave your inverter on all the time and if it takes too much current and you leave it on overnight, the batteries will be dead. Same thing with an RV or whatnot. So it's important to have a low, no load current draw. Some inverters have a power save mode where they do a load sense and essentially shut down until they sense a load. I don't like that approach. I like inverters that simply have a low current draw. But neither of these have that current sense approach and uh, power save mode. So I'm just going to put my clamp meter on each inverter, turn it on, and see how much current they take and under no load. And we'll see which one wins that battle. So I'll make sure that, that my meter is zeroed out. This is a clamp meter, so it's not perfectly accurate, but that's close enough to zero, so we'll just clamp that on there. Actually, <clears throat> and we'll try to zero it out one more time, get us a little more accurate number. And I'll turn on the Ames Power Corporation inverter. And there's a big surge when you turn it on, but after that, it settles down and... Looks like there was some instability in the input power circuit. I don't especially like that, but it is drawing about 0.7 amps, so about three quarters of an amp, and that's pretty respectable. So this can be connected to a battery for a long time without draining it, and 0.7 amps is pretty good. <clears throat> While we're at it, let's also take a look at how the inverter actually performs here. They have this gauge, which probably oversaturates my camera because it's really bright, that toggles between load percent right now zero because there is nothing plugged in, and battery voltage, which is 13.4. That's kind of a nice feature, a feature that the OSP Tiger Claw does not have. But I'll turn this one off and move my clamp meter <clears throat> over to the OSP Tiger Claw. Zero it out once again. And turn this on and see what this one draws. Fans are on right now, so it's probably drawing more current than it will once they turn off. So an amp and a half with the fans on, 
with the fans off, which is what it will be when there's no load for the most part, unless it's very hot for some reason, it's drawing about half an amp. Maybe 0.6, but around half an amp. So for no load current draw, both of these inverters are very respectable. And for the most part, it's a tie, but the edge goes to the OSP Tiger Claw, just barely. We've looked at the no load power draw of these two inverters, which is important for battery life, but what's even more important is how efficient these inverters are when they are under load. Because when they're under load, they could be drawing more than 100 amps from your battery bank, and that matters a lot more than the 0.5 or 0.7 amps that they draw under no load. So let's take a look at that. To do that, I'm just going to use this electric heater as a load. I could use an active load, like a refrigerator or something, but there's reasons why I'm not doing that. This is actually uh, better for that application. So I'm just going to use this heater, and I'm going to test it under two different settings. I'm going to try it under low and under high, assuming that these inverters can actually power the heater when it's on high. I think they should, because this is a 1500 watt heater, and these are 1500 watt inverters, but you never really know. So let's give that a try. On the input terminals, I'm going to try this inverter first. On the input terminals, I have my voltmeter connected right up to the input terminals of the inverter. Right now it happens to be 13.6 volts. And I have my ammeter on the input cable. I also have my kilowatt meter that should show us the current draw. I will also show you the waveform later. This inverter has a very interesting startup, which again I'll show you later, but right now let's just take a look at the efficiency. So we are at 117 volts <clears throat> and 0 watts. So let's turn the heater on low. Heater seems to be running. It's very nice and quiet, just like it should be on a sine wave inverter. If I run the same heater off of a modified sine wave inverter, it buzzes and doesn't blow much air and just doesn't operate properly. So yeah, even simple things like electric heaters run better on sine wave power. But it is showing 527 watts. So I'm going to take my scrap of paper and write down 527 watts. Alright, and the input voltage is 13.07. 13.07 volts at 48.2 amps. <clears throat> and that's all the information I need to get an efficiency. Let's also take a look at the accuracy of this voltmeter. It is saying 12.7 volts. Obviously, it isn't quite right because it's about 13 volts. And also it's saying 35% load, which is pretty close because we're drawing 500 watts. <clears throat> and this is a 1500 watt inverter. So let's try high. And it's saying overload and making a really annoying buzzing noise that I really don't like. Let's check the voltage 111 volts, so it's sagging some what? Under load. And apparently, this inverter cannot run my heater on high even though it's a 1500 watt inverter. Bad sign. So I'm going to back it down to medium, and we'll see what it does on medium. Again, this is probably a little dark. I apologize if you can't read it very well. But it's on medium right now, and we are drawing 786 watts on the output. So 786 watts. And the voltage hasn't sagged. It's still 115 volts. <clears throat> so that's good. Our input voltage is 12.35. I'll write that down. And our current is 73.4. And I've had people ask me, how do you calculate efficiency? So I'm going to show you how to do that on my old TI-89 calculator here. And basically it's just output power over input power. So here we have 527 watts, so 527. And our input power is volts times amps, so 13.07 times 48.2. So we'll divide this by 13.07 times 
and that will give us efficiency. 83.7%. So I'll write that down. And I'll do the next one. So the result, results are that at one-third load, this inverter is about 84% efficient. At two-thirds load, it's about 87% efficient. Now, that actually matches up well with the user manual, which states over 85%. But if you go to the website, they advertise that this inverter is oh, about 95% efficient. That is untrue. This inverter is not 95% efficient. It's about 85% efficient. So keep that in mind. Don't look at the literature on the internet. This inverter is about 85% efficient. And that's middle of the pack for a sine wave inverter. I have a Samlex 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. That one is in the 90s. That's a very efficient inverter, the most efficient I've ever seen. And there are less efficient inverters too. Let's take a look and see what the OSP Tiger Claw can do under the exact same conditions. I'm not going to actually show you the test. I'm just going to transfer all of this stuff over to this inverter and run it exactly the same, and I will tell you the results. On second thought, I am going to show you the results of this because this inverter was incapable of running this heater on high. So let's see what this one can do. I tested it on low, and it was 82% efficient. So a couple percent efficient, less efficient than the Ames inverter. Similar, but slightly less. So let's turn this on high and see what happens. So that is on high. It is drawing 1400 watts about. Let's see if the voltage is sagging. The voltage is holding up pretty well so far. That's good to see. It's still at 115. It is slowly dropping though, probably as the input voltage falls. You can see that the input voltage is at around 12 volts right now, which is more than enough to run this inverter. But the input voltage is starting to sag a little bit. It's not too surprising. We are driving it pretty hard. So let's take a look and see what it's doing. 1240 watts. I'll write that down. At 11.95 volts. And we are drawing 125.7 amps. So in the efficiency test between the Ames Power Corporation and the OSP Tiger Claw, the Ames inverter wins. This one is in the mid to upper 80s in terms of efficiency, which is pretty average. The OSP Tiger Claw is in the low 80s, both at low and high with about one-third load and just about full load, it was around 82.5% efficient. So the OSP Tiger Claw is a low cost point inverter and that efficiency is respectable for what it is, but just comparing them one for one, the Ames inverter wins once again.